As a mass production process, 3D printing offers all kinds of opportunities for efficiencies within the economies of how to make stuff. They offer more iteration, they reduce your waste per part, and it allows you to scale up very affordably without large upfront capital expenditures. And that's all fine economically. But 3D printing also creates a lot of environmental and sustainability advantages that people don't really discuss very often. So we're gonna go through the major ones here today. The impact that 3D printing can have on sustainability is really quite dramatic. Researchers from Delft University estimated that 3D printing could reduce global energy usage by 5 to 27 percent. This is an astounding number, but it's made possible by the reductions in waste that additive manufacturing brings about, especially when applied to mass production and the production of final products. And you have to remember that that reduction in energy is not just a reduction in the energy produced, but the reduction in the carbon emissions needed to produce that energy. It is not a small improvement or a small action item in helping to hit the sustainability goals that the world has set for itself. But how does this actually occur? Well, one of the biggest contributors is with transportation. 3D printing is able to produce parts much closer to the point of consumption, so transportation costs are reduced. Today, with traditional methods of manufacturing, transportation can account for almost 30% of the emissions over the lifetime of the product. Having 3D printing farms that are able to produce parts closer to the point of consumption can drastically reduce that overall emission and energy expenditure. The other point of efficiency is just in the reduction of waste. Right now, traditional methods require overproduction of as much as 15 to 25 percent. But since 3D printing is able to produce much closer to on demand and does not have the scale requirements of many traditional manufacturing processes, and since it is an additive process where no bit of material is added that is not actually used, 3D printing is able to drastically reduce material waste and the energy that would have gone into processing that material that would have been wasted. Right now, it's estimated that by using additive methods rather than traditional types of machining and manufacturing, you can reduce material waste by up to 90% of what it is today. The other efficiency is just endemic in the process itself. 3D printing is a very efficient manufacturing process because all you have are the raw materials and the energy needed to melt that raw material, in this case, plastic. Whereas other manufacturing processes have a lot of ancillary processes around them, like the manufacturing of the mold for an injection molding process, which is very energy intensive. Since 3D printing only uses the minimal amount of energy necessary to convert a material from one form to another, it is much more efficient than traditional manufacturing manufacturing processes. And you can take advantage of this even more if you design explicitly for the 3D printing process. Optimizing a design of the part to both be efficient in a manufacturing context also makes it much more efficient from a sustainability context. Another advantage that 3D printing has over traditional is just the reduction in warehousing costs. Since no part really has to be created until it's actually needed, you're able to condense a supply chain all the way down to basically a single black box, a print farm a warehouse where the shelves make the product. Having a single factory that is both the manufacturer and the distributor eliminates not only the transport, but also eliminates the warehousing expenses themselves, maintaining temperature and humidity within a controlled environment of a separate building that simply holds product that then gets transported again. Eliminating that warehousing cost reduces all the environmental impact of that building and the conditioning of that building. And while this seems like it might be a trivial component of it, when parts are stored for years and in case of like car spare parts, decades, this can be a very large emission component because warehouses are temperature controlled. You're ensuring that that facility is human habitable and temperate throughout the entire lifetime in order to make sure that parts don't decay. But if parts are only made when they're needed, the problems of storage are no longer necessary. And since you no longer need the warehouse, all you have to thermally control is a factory. Now let's take a real world example of just shoes, normal off the shelf shoes. Traditionally, they'd be manufactured in some place like China. In this situation, the raw materials account for about 20 to 25% of the total emissions of the product. The manufacturing process is about 15 to 20% of the product. Transportation, about 30 to 35%. And end use, basically the recycling and reprocessing of those at some point down the line is about 20 to 25% of the emissions of the product. Big chunks for each one of those steps. 
But if you move to an additively manufactured shoe, to where it has less transportation, less material waste, and it's more easily reprocessed because you're able to have more cohesive types of materials rather than having glues and adhesives and separate fabrics and that kind of thing, you're able to get much more efficiency and much lower emissions. Just the fact that a print farm is able to produce shoes locally reduces transportation costs from 30 to 35% down to like 5%. Since fewer raw materials are used in the production of that shoe, those go from 20 to 25% of the emissions to only about 10%. And since 3D printing produces so much less scrap, both because you don't overproduce and you're able to create a more efficient process, the emissions from the reprocessing of that scrap drop to only like five or 10%. Overall, this means that 3D printed shoes produce almost 40% fewer emissions than traditionally manufactured shoes. And as the processes continue to refine and evolve, it's expected that that could become as much as 60% from traditional methods today. And this really explains why companies like Adidas and many other large manufacturers are pursuing manufacturing with 3D printing. Adidas has the 4D FWD line of their 3D printed shoes, where they're exploring and expanding on these additively manufactured shoes because they're so much more efficient and they help to meet their sustainability goals long time. Traditional methods just can't get us there. Traditional methods got us to today, but it takes a new technology like 3D printing that is so much more efficient because it reduces transportation it reduces raw materials, and it is just overall a more efficient system in and of itself alone without those other side benefits throughout the supply chain. You're able to take an entire supply chain where something is made over there, transported thousands of miles, stored in a climate controlled box, used for a while, and then thrown away, and instead condense that all down to a printer farm that's able to produce the items on demand in the quantities necessary, deliver them straight to customers, and do it much more efficiently and sustainably than any other way ever before. If you want to learn more about the Adidas 4D shoes, you can actually check out our video on that right over here. It's actually a really cool story where they have created this new methodology of designing shoes that they've been working on for quite a while. And if you want to check out the research and the article that went into making this video, you can check that out down below to get even more of the numbers and more of the references there. Printing has the scale, it has the capability, it has these advantages, but it has to have the products decide to use it. Have a great day, everybody.